So we are starting this chapter four, which is time value of money. The name of the chapter is time value of money. So we will learn here that the money has a time value. And basically when I say at the time value, uh, it means that when you have 100 reals now, today, it is different than having 100 reals one year later, okay? So although you uh, feel that they are both the same, they are 100 reals, what is the different? There is a different between these two and in this chapter we will learn why is it different and how can we make these time value calculations and we will learn the concept of economic equivalence. Okay, money has a time value. Why is that so? Simply we can uh, count three re uh, two reasons here. First of all, money has a time value because it can earn more money over the time. This is called the earning power. What is it? So assume that you have 100 reals now. What can you do with this 100 reals? Of course, it's a very small amount. Maybe you will not be able to establish a business with this 100 real, uh, but simply you can go to a bank and deposit this 100 reals into the bank uh, in an interest earning account. So what will happen after one year? If the bank gives you, let's say 5% interest, in one year, your 100 reals will become 105 reals. You can withdraw the money from the bank and it will be 105 reals. So, it has an earning power. You can use your money in investments and as a result of these investments, you can earn. This is the earning power of the money. And because of this, we say that money has a time value. But on the other hand, we can think from another perspective, money has a time value because of its changes in uh, its purchasing power. And this is called inflation. So what does it mean? Assume you have 100 reals now, and this with, with this 100 reals, if you go to the market, let's say you can buy 100 kilograms of milk, 100 liters of milk, okay, with 100 reals. And this is in 2021. And let's, uh, and let's assume that you kept that money, 100 reals, in your pocket for one year, and in year 2022 you went to the same market with 100 reals and you want to buy milk and when you look for the same amount you can buy only 95 liters of milk instead of 100. So what happened during this one year? The price of the milk increased. It was one uh, real initially, let's say one liter of milk was one real, but now it is more than one real, so that you cannot buy 100 liters, you can only buy 95 uh, liters. So it means that uh, money loses its purchasing power uh, with time. And because of this reason, we say that money has uh, a time value. Okay, so these are the two reasons loss in the purchasing power or increase in the earning power. Because of these reasons, these two reasons, we say that money has a time value. And the time value of money is measured in terms of interest rate. Okay, when I say 5% interest rate, this is the value of money, time value of money. And what is this interest? It is the cost of money. 
okay it is the cost of money let's say that there is one person here and another person or this can be a bank bank and this can be a person and etc so as a person you went to the bank and asked for some loan some money and they borrowed you they give you some loan and they said that you can keep this money for one year but after one year you need to pay it back but you need to pay it back using a 5% interest meaning that I will give you 100 reals now and you will pay me back 105 reals so this 5 real is the cost of the money 5 real is cost of obtaining this 100 real now and keeping it for one year it's the cost okay and it is a cost for you as a person but this 5 real is an earning for the bank the lender it earns this 5 real but if you are the one who borrows this money then it's the cost for you okay let me continue by the way we talked about the risk when there is this bank and this bank guarantees you this 5% interest rate so whatever happens I will give you this 5% or I will ask you this 5% then it is the interest but in other business investments there may be risk and usually the return is proportional to the risk so if the risk is higher then usually your return is higher if the risk is lower then the return is lower and in, a, in the bank case uh, you for example deposited some money to this bank with 5% interest rate and the risk is almost zero we cannot say it's definitely zero but it's very close to zero there is no risk and this 5% is the risk free earning but if you establish a business with your money you don't know what will happen will it be successful or not you don't know it so you don't know how much will you will earn at the end but it can be a risky business so you don't know the success rate at all and etc but you expect if the people like it in the market then maybe you will earn 50 percent but on the other hand there is a probability that you will not earn anything but you will lose your initial investment at all and it will be negative okay so if there is such a chance of losing your money or not uh, being earned or if this interest is not guaranteed at all then we say that there is a risk and if the risk is higher usually there is a return and the thing is the investors uh, for example in this bank and person example as a person we are the investor so what we do we ask for loan from the bank we get some money and with this money what we do we establish a business we buy a car we buy a house and etc and after that we pay this money back to the lender okay so here we are the investor and the bank is the lender and the lenders get interest uh, for letting us use this amount of cash okay this interest as I told you is the fee that this borrower pays to the lender for the use of this money and the interest rate is the percentage of the money being borrowed and that's paid to the lender on some time basis this time basis can be years months and etc we will talk about this in more detail okay so if the interest rate is eight percent so this is the bank and this is the investor so this is a cost for us but a profit or an earning for the bank for the lender okay now as I told you this course is mainly related to these interests we first learn how to make calculations using these interests but the main idea look here remember 
we are engineers we are not economists we will not try to solve the problems economical problems and etc what we try to do is as engineers we will make designs and in the design process we will have different alternative designs and we need to somehow compare these alternative designs with e with each other to identify which one is the best and of course we can compare the alternative designs with respect to their uh, technology with respect to their functionality and etc and also one criteria to compare alternatives with each other is with respect to their economical aspects whether they are less costly and etc okay the, in terms of their cost so when we compare these alternatives alternative designs with respect to their costs when we have different types of projects we will compare them with respect to their costs and if if these projects or these designs will end up with outcomes for example inflow and outflow of cash at different times of at different times one year from now two years from now and etc then it, we cannot just compare them with each other by just adding and subtracting the costs we cannot add a cost that occurred at this year plus another cost that appears two years after now okay so this is now this is two years later we cannot just simply add them because as i told you there's a time value of money and this time value of money states that these 200 riyals uh, two years from now is not equal to 200 riyals that we have it now because may because of inflation because with this 200 riyals you will not be able to buy the exactly the same amount of goods that you can buy here okay so that's why we will learn how to do this calculation how to simply add these two values and then when we learn it we will learn how to compare project alternatives with each other this is the main objective but in this chapter we will learn how to do these calculations okay so basically when we talk about interest there are two types of interest first one is the simple interest and as the name in Lies, it's very simple and you will learn it here but most probably you will not use it in the rest of this uh, course okay it is only to know that there is such an interest so what is simple interest according to this it says that the interest is only applied to the initial amount which is the principal amount okay I will explain it with more examples but in compound interest which is the other alternative and which we will use in the rest of this course it is compound interest so interest is applied to the initial sum plus all previously accumulated interest that uh, has not been withdrawn from the account okay so in compound interest simply we will calculate the interest of interest and the interest of that and the interest of that as well okay this is compound interest but in simple interest we will just consider the main amount let's uh, have a look at this in this course we will always use some notation and we will use the same notation so from now on you will always see this p's i's n's f and etc and each time these will mean the same thing p is the principal amount and also we will name it later on as the present value present value okay i is the interest rate it's always the interest rate okay so and it's uh, denoted in terms of percentage 
Okay, I percent interest rate, 8 percent interest rate. 8 percent interest rate means 0 0.08. Okay. N is the number of interest periods. So let's consider this example to understand better. Let's assume that currently we, let's say, lend money to some people, to some friend, with $1,000, amounting $1,000. And each year, uh, he will give us 10% interest, and he will give us the money, the whole money, after three years. Okay, in three years. So what is the total amount of money that he will give us back? But the condition here is the interest is applied only to the principal amount, initial amount, which is 1,000. Okay, then how do we represent this? We represent the current time as zero. Always it is zero. So we will use such a time axis. So this is the current time, time zero. And this is year one, this is year two, and this is year three. But these represents actually the end of year one. Okay, this is the end. Then where is the beginning? The beginning is here. So this is the first month, this is the second month, third month, fourth month, and etc. And this is the end of the twelfth month. So this interval here actually is the first year and this interval over here is the second year and this is the end of the year and similarly this is the year itself and this is the end of the year. So what will happen? We give 1000 to our friend at this time. So the ending balance in your friend currently, this money is in your friend, it's 1,000. And when he keeps it for one year, during this year, when he, he keeps it, at the end of the year, he will give us 10% interest. So 10% of this 1,000 is 100. And so it means that at the end of the first year, the total amount will be 1,100. In the second year, during this year, he will keep the money again. And at the end of the year, again, he will give us 10% interest. But he will give this 10% interest only to the original amount, which is 1,000. So what is this 100? It is the interest that we earn during the first year. And in simple interest, it is not counted. Okay, so the interest is applied only to the principal amount. So this 1,000 is the principal amount. Okay, then the total balance after the second year is 1,200. This 200 is the interest for the two years, and this 1,000 is the principal amount. And similarly, in the third year, he will give us another 10% interest to the original value, and at the end of three years, he will give us back 1,300 reals. Okay? So it means that in this simple interest, the total interest uh, that is given is equal to the principal amount, which is 1,000 in the example, multiplied by the number of periods, which is three, multiplied by the interest rate, which is 10%, so I need to write it as 0 0.1. And when you do this multiplication, it's 300. This is the interest that is, uh, as, that is the result of a three years, uh, let's say, of borrowing or lending money. But what is the total amount at the end of three years? This is only the interest. The total amount will be equal to the principal amount, which is 1,000, plus the interest, which is 300. So in total, the total amount will be 1,300. Okay, this amount is calculated by this formula. 
So this F here, we represent with this F, it is the total amount accumulated at the end of period N. So why it is F? Because it's a future value. Okay. So this P is the present value, and F is a future value. That's why we name it as F. Now this was the simple interest. And let's see what happens in the case of compound interest. Again, use the same example. Again, we are lending 1,000 to our friend with 10% interest rate for three years. So again, in year zero currently, we lend this money to our friend. And at the end of year one, so let's say this is year zero, this is year one, two, and three. So our friend keeps the money for one year, and here he needs to give us 10% interest. And the amount that he keeps is 1,000, and 10% of it is 100, so the amount is 1,000 and 100. So this is exactly the same with this simple interest, right? But the things are a little bit different when we move to the second year. Because now here, the amount that our friend keeps is 1,100. And this compound interest considers all of them, not only the principal amount, but the whole amount. So it means that 10% interest will be applied to all of this, which makes $110, okay? And then when we add up these two, if our friend keeps this money for the second year for 10% interest, but this time he is keeping 1,100. And it means that he needs to give us back 1,010 uh, as an interest, and the total amount will be 1,210. And in the third year, again, the total amount is this much, and 10% of this value is this much, and when we add this, the total value, the total amount that he will give us back at the end of third year is $1,331 or reals, okay? So, as you can see, in the simple interest, the amount was 1,300, but in the compound interest, there's an additional 31 dollars and where did the, this 31 dollars came from uh, come from actually it come from the interest of interest the interest of interest okay so this is called compound interest and if we have a look at this in more detail 1000 he keeps for one year it means that at the end of one year with 10 percent interest it makes 1100 in the second year, now he is keeping 1,100 for one year with 10% interest, and it makes this amount. And in the third year, again, another 10% to this whole amount makes the money this much. This is a comparison of simple interest with compound interest. In simple interest, as you can see, this is a line. This is just a line, and as you increase this up to 10th year, again, it will move, it will go in the same slope as a line. But this compound interest, it is not a line. As you can see, at this point, its slope is changed. At this point, its slope is changed. At this point, its slope will be changed a little bit more and more and more and more it will try to, it will start increasing uh, step by step at each period, okay? So this is the comparison of simple and compound interest, and this is where we stop uh, at this lecture. We will continue learning simple and compound interests and how we use them in calculations.